to share with you all. Thank you, Prof, for that wonderful introduction. Really appreciate it. And I really appreciate this opportunity to share with, with you all. I am uh, sitting today in a hotel room in Ghana, in West Africa, where I'm just completing a two-week uh, quarantine for uh, Corona. I just flew in from Canada nearly two weeks ago. And a lot of things I don't like about Corona, and uh, I could go on and on and on about uh, spending two weeks in a hotel room. But I love the fact that uh, Corona has made it okay to do things like this in, uh, in casual shirts, and I didn't have to put on a suit and tie for, for this. So, all, uh, all good. What I want to do today is, uh, is just take a bit of time and talk about how the path to profit has been remapped and how the path to profit has been remapped because of so sustainability, because of social impact, because of a whole host of things that have changed, have been changing for years and, and with accelerating change and increasing impact. So let, let's go through it. The, uh, the world of business has, has changed. I, I don't think uh, anyone would disagree with that. I mean, if you look at the subject of, of this event, the world of business has, has changed. There's key issues, drivers and trends have, have changed. The whole path to profit is being re remapped. And we're gonna be looking at that. We're gonna look at the issues, drivers and trends. We're gonna look at remapping the path to profit and then we're going to look at a case study. And the case study is, uh, I think, quite interesting. Uh, it's a business that I, I started and, uh, and run. I ran it off the corner of my desk for years. I was running the CSR Training Institute and teaching and consulting and sustainability worldwide. But over the last two to three years, I found that the sustainability platform foundation that we built in the business has just been driving sales and, and growth and is attracting investment and, uh, and interest. But let's go, let's go and look at the, uh, the key issues and, and drivers. And because this is school, I, I, I'm sure most of you know this uh, sustainability formula, but uh, just, just so we're all on the same page, there will be a test on it. And, uh, and Prof Mohan will, uh, will be administering the test later. So you can, uh, you can talk to him about it. I'm sure he's warned you about it. I'm sure this isn't a surprise. So the world has, has changed. Business is, is about value. It's about creating and preserving shareholder value. If we go back to the 1960s, and that, uh, that's getting to be a long time ago. That's 40, 60 years ago. Wow. Milton Friedman um, in 1970, so 50 years ago, writing in the New York Times magazine, said the social responsibility of business is to increase its profits. That's the traditional view. The path to profits is very direct. It was a focus on improving value creation efficiency. That's the role of business, is improving value creation efficiency. If you don't create value, you won't have profits. You need to be efficient at creating that value in order to create profits. That was the path to profit in 1970, and let's see what it is today. 1970, I, I'm sure most of you don't remember that phone on, on the left. I actually remember, I, I grew up in a, in a remote village in northern Saskatchewan in, in Canada. The, uh, the furthest north east-west road was actually just south of my, my house. So you could literally walk out the door and go to the North Pole. And I was, I don't know, maybe 10 years old when we got a phone like that. It was a huge improvement because before that, we had a whole bunch of the, uh, the farms and, and people that lived out in our rural area were on one line and we shared it. You had to pick up the line and, you know, and today we live in the echo chamber of social media where every one of us has the power in our hand or in our pocket 
to broadcast immediately to the entire world. And that has created a, a profound change. The other reality that, that has changed is that sustainability expectations and imperatives grow stronger every year and everywhere. What do I mean by, by that? Stakeholders, society, customers, employees, governments, investors, regulators, you, you name it. There is a growing expectation that business should be an effective steward of the environment and produce social value at the same time as it's creating business value. That is the trend. That trend line is clear every year and everywhere. There are no geographic exemptions. Ask yourself, is more expected of business today than five years ago? Are there higher environmental performance expectations? Are there higher social performance expectations? Five years ago, were there more than there were 10 years ago? Is there any one of you that think that this trend is going to change? That it's going to change and five years from now, we'll be looking at less environmental performance expectations, less demands on environmental stewardship, less demands on social justice and social performance. If there is, I hope we can talk afterwards because I would love to hear how you come to that conclusion. Maybe you're right, maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know, but I would love, love to hear how you come to that conclusion. The world of business has changed. Financial markets have, have changed. A couple of years ago in Harvard Business Review, Professor George Seraphim writing, the fastest growing cause for shareholders is sustainability. Think on it. Harvard Business Review, fastest growing cause for shareholders is sustainability. The world's largest private investor, BlackRock, $6 trillion under management. A couple years ago, took out a full page ad in the New York Times to correspond with his annual letter to CEOs of companies that he's invested in. Basically, he said, contribute to society or we won't invest. Full page ad in the New York Times. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, recently said, we are on the edge of a fundamental reshaping of finance. Think on it. The world's largest investor saying we're on the edge of a fundamental reshaping of finance. A reshaping of finance that includes social and environmental issues. In fact, you can say that social and environmental issues have become core to that reshaping of the world of finance. Let's look at how business valuation models have, have changed over 40 years. 40 years. And 40 years seems like a long time, but, uh, you know, stock markets 40 years ago, 1980, 1975 to 1980, the average North American and European stock market valuation of the companies was made up of 80% book value. So 80% tangible assets, the plant, the equipment, the inventory, other assets, cash in bank, the things you could see and feel and touch. 80% of the value of the company and the stock market was made up of tangibles. 20% was intangible. Fast forward to 2017, the study done by Boston College. It's reversed. It's actually 82.3% of the value is made up of intangibles, of brand capital, of reputational capital, of those things that do not show up on the balance sheet, not plant and equipment and inventory and, and cash. Over 80% is intangible. It's reputational capital, it's brand, brand equity. 
you, you think of it. You think of how that has changed and what that means. Think of the businesses that used to be valued based on their hard assets and are now valued more based on intangibles, on reputational capital, on brand equity. If that's the case, it's really important we start to look at reputational capital and brand equity and these intangibles, because if it's 80 some percent of the business, you can be darn sure that we better remap that path to profit so we're taking account of it. You know, I put this slide together just to summarize. Uh, I put business 2030. I often use this slide in lectures uh, where I'm, I'm focusing on the sustainable development goals. But because of the time available on, on this, I, I'm, uh, I'm avoiding... Uh, not, not getting into the sustainable development goals. But, but there's two sides, and these are expectations of business today. Business is expected to deliver social value and impact. It's expected to improve and continue improving its environmental stewardship. It's expected to engage with the SDG agenda. For those, those not fully aware, the SDG agenda is the Sustainable Development Goal Agenda. It's a world development framework that was adopted by the United Nations, unanimously adopted by all the member states in the United Nations. It's been unanimously ad adopted. Whatever country you're from, your country has an SDG framework and is driving forward on it to create a better world. Business is also expected to deal with ever-increasing regulatory requirements. Now you see sometimes there's a rollback, sometimes there's some deregulation, sure. But you watch, it, it comes back and, and often when the, uh, when the regulatory requirements are rolled back, they aren't rolled back as, as much as expected. At the same time as business is expected to deliver on those requirements, it's also expected to be reducing costs, increasing growth, and keeping shareholders satisfied. That is the reality of business management today. That is what is required of business managers. That is a difficult tightrope to, to walk. And if you can't find a way to create alignment if you look at those two sides of the slide, and if you get them in a zero sum, where to have more of one, you have to have less of the other. If you get them in that framework, you are going to have a difficult time, an increasingly difficult time. So the, the path to profit has, has shifted. We, uh, we can't simply have, a, have a basically a unidimensional focus as, as was, uh, was possible in, in past years. And not all strategies on, on moving on the path to profit are, are created equal. There, there's many different ones. What I want us to get into is that sustainability, social impact, is not a detour or a side road. In today's business world, the path to profit passes through social value. It passes through environmental stewardship to create shareholder value. There are no detours, detours or, or side roads. That is simply the requirement of doing business. You may find the odd situation in the odd corner of the world somewhere where it's less important than it is elsewhere. But I'll guarantee you, if you look at the stakeholders, even in, in any situation you can come up with, you're going to have stakeholders of that business that have increasing social and environmental expectations at the same time as they have increasing financial and operational performance expectations. And as we saw, the financial markets have, have shifted. The reality of the financial markets are that these sorts of brand capital, reputational capital, brand equity issues 
are becoming central to business performance and valuation. So how do you remap the path to profit? Don't think you can afford to invest in social value in, in isolation. It's not a charity. The, the, the way to handle increasing expectations for social performance and environmental stewardship is not to set up a philanthropic charitable aspect to the business and think that takes care of it, to not to look at environmental stewardship as a cost and you allocate some expenses there so that you can continue and, and make profits on, on the other side. If you do that, if you just simply look outside your business for some social good you can contribute to, you're adding costs to your business. Sure, you're, you're meeting some of the expectations, some of the growing expectations on social performance, but you're doing it at a cost, at a cost that is going to take away from your business performance. What you're doing is setting up a zero-sum transfer of value from your shareholders to society. And, you know, when, when you do that, when push comes to shove to get more shareholder value, you're going to have to have less societal value. What you want to do is look for opportunities where social good investment can and will drive business value. Look for opportunities where you can do well by doing good. Look for value propositions that align social, environment, and business value. And your sustainability practices should solve business problems and issues, not just external social issues. Let me give you an example. I don't know, two, three, four years ago, I can't, can't remember, time, time flies by, but uh, I, I was in, uh, in Jakarta, in Indonesia, doing, uh, doing some work, and I, I was working with a, a very well-known financial services company. This company had moved into Indonesia, made a big investment in the Indonesian market with its consumer Area. So deposit taking, loan making, insurance, those, those sorts of, of consumer services. And it had done it because it looked and it saw with the growth of agriculture, with the growth of mining, with the growth of oil and gas and other areas in Indonesia, that there were literally hundreds of thousands of households that were transitioning from a subsistence economy to a salary and cash-based economy. And as that transition happened, those households were going to require financial services of the sort that this company could provide. So they looked and they thought, you know, where else can we go in the world where there are literally hundreds of thousands of new customers coming to market? We're going there. It was a responsible company. They got into Jakarta, they got set up and they thought, you know, we know that there are in our investors, our employees, the regulators, everybody is expecting us to create social good at the same time as we're creating shareholder value. They looked around, they saw that inner city Jakarta had a huge food insecurity problem, that there was, there was hunger and big issues, especially amongst children and, and vulnerable sectors. So they said, you know, we can do something about that. So they found some partners and they created inner city food and feeding programs, uh, some gardens, some uh, community feeding centers, some feeding for kids, some things in schools. It was really a comprehensive program and they were doing a lot of good. They were making difference. They were helping make people healthier. They were, you know, kids with full stomachs were going to school and they were learning more. There was nobody could say that they weren't doing social good. But when I, I met with them and I, I looked, I was out in the fields, I, I looked at their operations and, and I come back and I, I said, you know, there is no doubt 
that you are creating a lot of social good. But where is the business value in, in that? And, you know, and of course they made a, made an argument on, on how it, you know, it, uh, it gave them a good name, it gave them something to talk about, they could put it on their website, the government liked it, people liked it. I said, where's your, where's your market? Where, where are people, well, you know, it's the people out in the hinterlands that are, are, are becoming, uh, you know, moving into, uh, into a cash economy. That's, that's our, our market. I said, let's think for a minute. I said, what is one of the challenges that those families, every one of them is facing? Virtually every one of those families has no personal or even family history of being in the formal financial sector. They are very unsophisticated consumers of the services that you're offering them. And that lack of sophistication is costing. It's costing them. They're not able to make as, have, create as much value from the deposit taking and the loans and the insurance that you offer them. They're not able to capture as much value for their family from the salaries they own because they, they lack some of that financial literacy capacity that would let them do that. So I, I said, you know, when you think of the costs of that lack of financial literacy in the sector that you are marketing to, that cost is huge. There's an inefficiency in converting salaries to value for the family. Many people get so frustrated because they don't understand this new sector that they just opt back out and, and they go back to a subsistence economy. I said, what about if you were to set up a program either on your own or, or with another partner where you run financial literacy programs. So you went, you know, mining company XYZ is hiring 500 people. And, uh, and you go in and you work with the mining company and an NGO and you give them some financial literacy classes. You help them understand how to manage a paycheck, how to save, how to deposit, how to use insurance, how to make loans, what, how, to, how to make decisions around that. Not just because they'll become your customers, but they will get to know you and they're more likely to become your customers. You are going to create a lot of social value doing that. You're going to be doing things that your employees can engage in. I mean, I know your employees come and they get involved in this inner city feeding program, but the reality is that's not their area of expertise. So at the end of the day, there, there was a real aha that here was a way that they could create social value that was also creating business value because they were creating more educated consumers for themselves and they were positioning their business, their company, their brand with this emerging market. So sustainability done right doesn't just look at social and community needs and try to fix them. It looks at where there can be synergy. We talked about the inner city feeding program. What's key on sustainability is when you are looking at social and environmental sustainability programs and investments, look at value. Look and understand your value proposition. What is the environmental value? What is the social value? And critically important, what is the business value? What value is coming back to your business from that? Can you make more? Can you enhance all of those values? Can you create more social value, more environmental value, and more business value at the same time? Can you do it so it's not a zero-sum game? So sustainability done right doesn't try to change a business to a charity. It's all about value creation and efficiency. It's about being efficient at creating social, environmental, and business value. It integrates sustainability throughout the business. 
deliver social value without turning any part of the business into a do-gooder, charitable organization. It integrates and aligns social value, environmental stewardship, and shareholder value. It avoids zero-sum value distribution approaches. And when it's done right, it drives value creation and competitive advantage. It is so critical that you know your sustainability value proposition. Know why and how your sustainability investments are creating value. Know the social value creation, know the environmental value creation, and know your business value creation. Understand how it impacts your, your stakeholders. I can't get over this hard enough. Sustainability done right creates tangible value for all parts of a business. It creates efficiency, it creates competitive advantage, it will increase your access to capital, it will reduce your cost of capital, it will help you in attracting and retaining top talent, it enhances teamwork and performance, it opens new market opportunities, it improves regulatory relationships, it improves stakeholder in engagement, and it improves the leadership profile and the networking opportunities for the leader of your businesses. Just uh, last year, the uh, United Nations in Environment Program um, launched the, uh, the principles on sustainable banking at the, uh, the, the annual uh, assembly of the United Nations in, in New York in, uh, in September. And it seems like a long time ago, pre-COVID, it, it seems like a, a different world. But in, anyway, I, uh, I worked with one bank from, from Nigeria to help them engage in and be, be one of the founding signatories and, and uh, you, you know, it was, it was amazing. They were relatively medium-sized bank from Nigeria. <coughs> Excuse me. The way they set up their sustainability, the way we set it up and communicated that as part of their, their becoming a founding signatory they ended up invited to be part of the main panel launching it. It, it enhanced their position in the financial community in, uh, in Lagos, in Africa. It, it just made a huge change because it created brand capital, reputational capital, which is increasingly important. <coughs> so let me quickly go through uh, a case study that uh, company that I, I created and, and still run that uses sustainability and social responsibility to create competitive advantage. So there's the website, you can go and, and look at it. And what it is, the company, we provide butters and, and oils to the handcrafted soap and, and cosmetics market. And that's a rapidly growing sector. It, it's uh, you know, it's hundreds of millions of dollars of, uh, of business in, in North America and, and, uh, and growing rapidly and in Europe, the, the same thing. People make uh, products and sell them in local markets. They might wholesale them. They might have a store. There are even uh, large industrial customers. Uh, one, of, one of our customers uh, actually operates, I, I think, about 12 retail shops are the largest uh, handcrafted soap maker in, in North America. Traditionally in this sector, the raw ingredients, the shea butter, the cocoa butter, the coconut oil and palm oils, etc., cetera, were, were just commodities, oils and, and butters and, and everything. But we looked and, and we saw that there's in this increasing interest, excuse me, I need a drink. <clears throat> There's this increasing interest in product origins, the purity and production processes, 
part of this, Carmen, I, I mean, I'm sure some of you have heard of all of the issues around palm oil, uh, a lot of it coming out of Asia and the deforestation, the social disruption, the fires. But the, the market, the, the businesses that we're selling to and their customers have this increasing interest in product origins, in social impact, in the supply chain, in the environmental impact of the ingredients growing into the, the, uh, the products. Historically, the marketplace was largely transaction driven. So purchase decisions were made on, on price, service, that sort of thing. And, and they're still really important, but increasingly there is a, a desire, a, 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 an interest in, in a relationship, in knowing more about the origins of, of the, the products. So that's what, uh, that's what we did. We started with, uh, with shea butter. We started working with, uh, with communities in northern Ghana. Uh, shea butter is a traditionally made product. It's been used for centuries. It's got incredible skin care properties. Um, picture up in the top right is uh, some of the seeds that are, are collected and made into shea butter. And there's a woman we work with talking about how, uh, you know, how the money she earns from us helps her. If you want to learn more on some of the social background, go to our website. We've got a 15 minute documentary on making shea butter and like 60 or 70 index videos and, and blog posts. But we built this business on providing strong support and impact to the children, families, and the women who made the shea butter, supporting them with education and development. And we developed the content. We took videos, we took pictures, we helped to communicate that. We really wrapped our brand in this community engagement and, and development. And we did it in a way that our customers could capture value from it. If you go to our Facebook page, if you go to our website, if you Google around, you will see customers who are using our social impact to help sell their, their products. So that means that they are getting extra value. And instead of an oil or a butter as a commodity product that's valued based on how it affects the whatever product that they're making, it's valued as an ingredient, they are also getting a marketing value, a marketing story out of it that, that they're using. So we've created that alignment. Our investing in social value and social impact in the communities and packaging that so we can bring it through to our consumers and they can use it to sell their products, we've created an additional dimension of value that creates that alignment. So what we're spending to increase impact in the communities is actually an investment that's helping with the marketing and, and sales. You get taken directly into a connection with, with the community. We, uh, we use sort of this Intel inside type of branding where our customers are branding their product based on, on the social impact of the ingredients that go into it. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Over 90% of our new customers cite our work with women and communities as being key to their buying decisions. In, you know, and the other thing it does, it makes our work more fun and enjoyable. People, our team loves working on this. They feel so good. They, they, we're making a difference. We're building a business and we're, we're making a difference. Every purchase gives the dignity of income to proud, hardworking women. You can see some of the ads there, gifts that, that matter. The Christmas ad where, you know, the, uh, this company, High Country Soap, made this ad. They said, every gift you buy from us, you're giving a gift to people, but you're also giving the gift of dignity and income to the people in Ghana who are, are making it. It really works. This just come in and I, I, I put it up, but we get reviews like this all the time from our customers. They, of course, we, the product is, is great. The quality is great. You have to have that. Your price has to be competitive. Your service has to be good. You can't 
not do those. But when you find a way, as we did in this business, to fold in social impact and environmental stewardship in a way that is not an expense, but a value creator, it makes a huge difference. This has driven our growth is running in the triple digits. We've created a whole new competitive arena. We don't have to go out and compete directly against, you know, ABC bulk commodities that, uh, you know, you're buying something, you have no idea where it come from, no idea how it was sourced, no idea about anything about it other than, it, than it's a co commodity. We're getting approaches from investors all the time that, that see the brand value that we've built. They recognize brand value is 80% of enterprise value and they want to invest. We've got a strong base of raving fans. We don't advertise. People advertise for us. We have people come to us all the time say, you know, I was on this Facebook group and I kept hearing about your products. I really want to try them. So we've set it up so that sustainability is not a cost. Sustainability is actually our core competitive advantage. So here we are. Business 2030, the traditional view. Business is still, whether it was 1960s and Milton Friedman talking about the social responsibility of businesses to create a profit, the core to business is creating and preserving shareholder value. But the reality of business today is that that path to profit has been remapped. Creating and preserving shareholder value focuses on it has to, it has to, it has to pass through social value and environmental stewardship. If it doesn't, if you are creating shareholder value without addressing social responsibility and environmental stewardship, you may be successful this year. You may be wildly successful this year. Don't expect that success to continue. You better look and understand the risk that you are taking because those trend lines aren't, aren't changing. There is an increasing expectation that business can and should deliver social value and be effective environmental stewards at the same time as creating shareholder value. And if you get away with ignoring it, maybe you're lucky. Maybe it's one year, maybe two. Not a, not a good bet and, uh, you know, it, and you will, it will cost you in other ways. So back to the formula. It's all about value. Sustainability, social responsibility, environmental stewardship is all about value. It's about aligning social value, environmental value, and shareholder value. It's not about setting them in opposition in zero-sum games. So important, so important. If any of you are involved in a business anywhere and you're making investments in social value, look at it and look at where and how you are capturing value for your business out of that. Often you can just make little tweaks and you can, you can find ways to capture more value back from what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this and, uh, and I look forward to, uh, to your questions.